it won't f***ing open. The capture of Saddam was nothing like Colonel James Hickey expected. The eight-month manhunt ended here. Uh, this is it. In a muddy orange grove where the dictator had fallen from palaces to pauper. This is about what it looked like when we got here. Hickey showed us the one-room shack and outdoor kitchen where Saddam was reduced to squalor. He still fancied himself president of a nation, but here he was the lord of the flies. That's happy tuna. Saddam's kitchen. Well, for some time, I guess. He's got his instant coffee, cans of tuna, and jars of beans. And beef luncheon meat. It turned out that Saddam was just a few miles from Hickey's headquarters, the 1st Brigade of the 4th Infantry Division. Secure the site, we got to basically walk them through. Hickey's the son of Irish immigrants, grew up outside Chicago, and earned advanced degrees in both public policy and diplomacy. But most of his work here has been detective work, hunting Saddam and his high-ranking henchmen. How many raids have your soldiers conducted in the Tikrit area since you got here? Well, the brigade uh, across my area of responsibility uh, has conducted over 500 raids of various types uh, since we have, uh, probably since June, about mid-June. We're constantly thinking about possibilities. Hickey says there was no luck or magic in finding Saddam this time. It was months of raids and interrogations focused on five powerful families in Saddam's hometown, Tikrit, what Hickey calls working up the family tree. We've identified, you know, five or so families that, that we thought early on were particularly important to uh, um, the security uh, of, of, of number one and their efforts to try to coordinate an armed resistance in, in our area. Colonel, you talk about these, these five families and working up the family tree. It sounds like an investigation of the mob. Clearly, this was a regime that relied on a handful of key families.